Julio obviously isn't the biggest guy, but he's scored a couple of touchdowns for you in the red zone. I'm just curious, when, when you don't have that sort of size, what it, what it takes to be good? Um, I would say... Great question. I, I think he's got good contact balance for his size, and I think, you know, when there was a time when we talked about a change of pace type back, I said, you know, he comes to my office, he's wanting me to call him a joker, and, and so we haven't done that yet. But I, I, I think that he's got good vision, um, and I think he's, some backs are just hard to um, lay your pads on than others. Like, in other words, he gets tackled, but, you know, he might just get quartered or, you know. So I think he's got good vision. He's got very good feet. And I would say there's, there's, um, there's some strength in how he runs. They have, uh, they've had, obviously, the bye week already, but they've been really good as a red zone defense so far. What, what have you seen from them in that? Yeah, look, we go through the numbers, and they've been – you know, near the top of the league. I don't, you know, um, now it's four weeks in, so whenever, I, I like to see, the one thing they've been really good at is they haven't had or defended a lot of trips into the red zone, so there's a start, you know, and, and so there's only, you know, the film this week, you know, you're going to the preseason, you're going to, um, because of that, and so, uh, you know, that's pretty impressive. It's been well documented, Sean. You guys on the defense only have one first round pick in Sertan. What does it say about the organization finding maybe these undrafted guys or late round picks that are now I th key defense I guys think, and all that? I think historically speaking, um, once they get here, um, you know, we kind of have to go by what we see. Now, you know, we've got some guys that we targeted as veteran free agents that we brought in and then there's some guys that have you know um earn their wings if you will later round picks i i think that i've said it before i think that um we we root for all these guys we root for our draft picks and yet ultimately we gotta we gotta play the best players and in the locker room knows that and, and if you get caught strain from that, then it's not a good thing. Coach, you've talked a lot about trying to paint a clear picture from the offense around low. When you have injuries and different changeups, how do you do that? Because you're never going to get a clear, clear picture, but how do you find balance? Well, yeah, I mean, look, there's that Shangri-La that you, you were chasing always, right? But um, it's just the, there, there's so many things that come up during a game, and at times, I'm like, man, he didn't do I'm not talking about the cue, the, the route or the tight end. And it wasn't done. And so then, as teachers, we have to say, did we cover it well enough? And so when I say that picture, it's uh, the right leverage on a block. It's the right technique on a route. It's the right footwork on a run. And all of that. You know, in close games, when you look at the film, sometimes you get frustrated and you're like, well, am I coaching that well enough? You know, I think you have to look, you have to start inward and then, and then, uh, and so sometimes we're longer out here because the de every little detail I think matters. You know, and, and not just with receivers or offensive line play, but, and so when all those details get cleaner and cleaner and, and then, the picture for the QB becomes brighter and cleaner. Coach, with the Thursday night game next week, mm -hmm. you start looking ahead this weekend, or how do you handle that preparation? So we did our study on it. Early on when they started, I felt like, man, we had a string of like four or five in a row. It felt like on the road and anyway, scheduling wise. Um, and then pretty soon we honed in on a, a schedule. Um, Look, I think for the most part, we're walking through Monday. We're walking, you know, they're off Monday with some film prep treatment. And then you have two days of kind of like we, you know, Tuesday would be walk through. Wednesday, we might move them around a little bit more and travel Wednesday night. And then, uh, and then I think it's important that it's the stuff they know by heart.
So you've got to be cautious or limit the amount of new thoughts on a short week. But most importantly, how do we recover physically and mentally? And I think I've been on the other end of that, you know, where we came in Sunday night, they practiced, and, I, and, it, and it's tough to do. So, um, but we'll get to that, you know, when it comes. And uh, that seems like a year away from now. What does 18 carries show you? Any practice this week coming in here? Um, look, we, we had some exposure with him. I, I obviously wasn't there, but Pete Carmichael, and we noticed him on, on his rookie year last year on film. Cody was there. They were all a part of that process. And so um, we weren't going to claim him, and then, but man, we sure would like to you know, recruit him to come to the practice squad. And he's long with good hands. Um, too early, though, just you know, in a short period of time, uh, had a chance to meet him. And uh, you know, again, a young player we want to develop. Sean, do you have a prognosis on Renwick? Um, none now. Look, uh, two o'clock. You, you guys will get all of that. I, I don't want to go through the. I guess I just there's a report. Yeah, I know. But if I hit Josh, then I'm gonna. I have to hit Luke, and then I have to. Yeah. So nothing right now, nothing to update, but fair enough. In terms, though, generally, the no, go ahead. I mean, you're going to have some different pieces on the offensive line. How do you kind of feel we'll about see. We'll, it being shuffled? We'll see. You know, if it is shuffled. Have yeah, we'll, we'll be ready to go. We'll be ready to go. Uh, uh, Sean, just, could you speak on the value that Trevor Smith has provided in the special teams over the system's been here? <laughs> um, man, there's a play last week. So when the other team punts, a lot of times you put – two hold-up guys to one side, and you single. And then sometimes you, you, you double both. I, I think that one of the hardest things to do in football is to be a gunner and fight two blocks. That's a tough. And so he's on the single side holding up one and, and on Marvin's return. And uh, one of the second hardest things to do is to be a single and take that guy out because, that, you know, that, there's a lot of freedom in, in what he's doing. But... He's fast. Um, he had a good return on the kickoff. You know, with, with these new rules, those guys were kicking to cover and then kicking away from Marvin. And so now that was the first game where, where we saw those true dirty balls, and that was like Phil, Phil Necro. But, it, but the positive is if you field it in time, like, man, it's on you right now. Um, and you're catching it at the eight or ten. Um, so I thought we handled that part well. It, he's he's been real, real productive and real important to us. To answer your question, and I'm glad we have him. Some of the, some of the things that you talked about with Jim Harbaugh's team running the football, winning the turnover battle, playing good defense, kind of applied to you guys. I said the exact same thing to our team two days ago. You know, said the exact same thing to our team two days ago, and so um, we just have to know. What's important in this game? How to win this game? Can you speak of the move to activate, um, make active crawl instead of Dolchitz and what's going to happen yeah, on Sunday? No, I'm not going to talk about Sunday. I'm just going to talk about that decision, and that's a good question. I, I, I kept seeing Lucas, you know, with some things during the week, and I wanted to change it up, you know, and, and now he helped us a little bit in the kicking game. They both run well, and so, and yet, I wanted to make sure uh, that, you know, I want both, because both of them have similarities. I wanted to make sure Greg knew that, hey, this isn't, it's week to week, and so we'll see this week in the direction we go. But both of them are similar in their strengths. Sean, the other day was the first time I think y'all hit a kick that hit the landing zone and came out to the 20 and, and these new rules. I guess it's weird that it's a novel. So it was, that's the, the other day it came up. There's a penalty we're kicking from the 50. Now, if we kick a touchback, it goes to the 30. Um, you can't mortar kick really anymore because it really doesn't make sense because no one moves until it's caught anyway. So there... Now, if you kick it out of bounds, it goes to the 25, and then you'd say, well, we realized some penalty yardage there. And so I walked over to the official, and I said, we're going to kick this out of bounds, and you're going to throw a flag. And 72,000 people aren't going to know what just happened and why it's at the 25-yard line. And it's just one of those unique nuances.
to the um, the way it's currently set up. You know, in, in other words, maybe in the off season, the out of bounds will be the same as, you know, and you just say, hey, the landing zone's the landing zone. But out of bounds is different than deep, and I think it's a little quirky. Is it because it was at the 50, the kickoff? That just take the penalty, yeah. Out of the bounds was the 25? Yep, we'll do the math when we kick it from the 35. And we kick it out of bounds. Where's it go? 40. Right. And so it, it, it's, a, it's just one of those things that um, I think everyone was puzzled. But 25 start, it was a, call it a five yard penalty then. So is it a dynamic penalty? Is that a good way to... <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. It was, it was a dynamic penalty. Um, thank you.